Good evening, this is Dr. John Bennett broadcasting from Miami. We have another in the series of Parkinsonism Hangout Educational Series with Dr. Abdul Rana of Toronto, Canada, a neurologist and a world-renowned Parkinsonism educator. And tonight, Dr. Rana is going to be talking about internal tremor in Parkinson's. Yes, you heard me correctly, internal tremor. Good evening, Dr. Rana. Good evening, Dr. Bennett. Yeah, this sounds like an interesting talk. I've never heard of, just like a mim mimism, the, the, the facies of Parkinson's. I mean, yeah, just like that. I, this is something I've never heard of before. So I'm <laughs> looking forward to hearing about this. Okay, we'll start things off with a question. What is, first of all, what is internal tremor in Parkinson, Parkinsonism? Internal tremor is a very strange symptom, which uh, some patients report. Uh, we really don't understand it very well. At least um, I'm still studying it, uh, being a student of movement disorders. Uh, but it does happen in patients. Uh, patients report that uh, they feel uh, inside their body uh, it's uh, a tremor going on or shaking going on. And in some patients, it could uh, start even uh, much before the onset of motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease or when they are diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, they think back and they can tell that they used to feel a tremor inside their body uh, for a, a long time uh, before the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. It's a very poorly studied and uh, uh, under uh, investigated uh, uh, symptom. Okay. Where is it felt in the body? Uh, most patients would report that uh, it, it involves their chest, abdomen, or legs, uh, and it's not visible to the other people, and it could be just on one side of the body. The, the side of the body which is affected uh, more by Parkinson's disease or in the beginning uh, with, uh, on, on the side where uh, symptoms of Parkinson's disease start, they could just feel that tremor on that side. And uh, sometimes uh, uh, this could uh, continue with the course of disease, uh, and uh, some patients may report that more when the effect of medications wears off. So in the wearing off periods, they may start feeling a tremor inside their body. And sometimes, unfortunately, it may not respond to, uh, to adjusting the dose of dopaminergic medications. Okay, what are the consequences of this internal tremor? It, it could be very frightening to the patients. Uh, patients may develop... Uh, uh, they may develop anxiety, sometimes they could go into a panic feeling uh, and uh, they, they don't, uh, they don't uh, really understand why it is happening, how can they stop it, or, or, uh, or even other people can't, uh, can't see it. So uh, if, uh, if, if they have a spouse or a caregiver or someone uh, living with them and they explain to them, so they think that uh, it's uh, uh, something in their uh, in, in like in their mind or something not real or they're trying to make up something or trying to gain attention and similarly physicians uh, if they are not aware they might think that uh, patients may have uh, some psychogenic condition so they could be labeled uh, uh, all these things and uh, some of these patients uh, uh, they become uh, quite uh, anxious about it and not only it leads to anxiety but they stop going up because they feel that if they are in the house and they have this tremor, they can at least lie down or try to overcome this. But if they are in the market or they go outside or in a social gathering or public places and they develop this tremor, uh, they would be helpless. And if, uh, and if it progresses, uh, sometimes due to uh, anxiety, they overbreathe, uh, they can have a, a, a feeling of presyncope or dizziness with it. Uh, so it becomes quite uh, overwhelming and disabling in some of the patients. And also, in uh, some patients, uh, it could be confused with uh, cardiac arrhythmias or trouble with the uh, lungs or sometimes seizures. So they may, uh, they may end up undergoing a lot of investigations. If they go to ER, they, um, they might have a ECG, echo, cardiology evaluation, and uh, long-term holter monitoring, sometimes up to two, three weeks or a month. So uh, it could uh, cause a lot of inconvenience uh, to these patients. Of course, these uh, tests are important to rule out serious causes, but they are not without any inconvenience of the patients. Uh, so it's a, 
it's a condition which uh, if happens, uh, uh, the physician as well as patient, they, they both uh, feel helpless because uh, uh, not many things you can do to treat these patients or uh, to uh, um, to alleviate this type of tremor. So you feel helpless and patients at the same time may feel helpless as well unless everything is ruled out and they understand that this is uh, something which uh, may not lead to any serious consequences and uh, they, um, uh, they overcome the situation in anxiety then, in, uh, then you can provide the assurance to these patients but otherwise in some patients it could be disturbing. How can it be managed? I think the first thing in these patients is uh, to rule out serious causes such as cardiac arrhythmias which can be ruled out by history and maybe some investigations, uh, ECG or the monitoring uh, and also uh, some of the symptoms uh, uh, of coronary artery disease uh, if uh, patients have or they have a history so I think they should be carefully assessed uh, or if they are diabetic or they are pre-diabetic or if they have hypoglycemia the hypoglycemia symptoms could create a feeling of internal tremor so that uh, those things should be ruled out. Also postural hypotension because uh, uh, if you are sitting or lying down and stand up and your blood pressure drops you may have tachycardia so that could be a physiological response to hypotension and uh, if these patients have uh, tachycardia that should be assessed and uh, uh, the, uh, this internal tremor should not be confused with it. Uh, and, uh, also, uh, if these things are ruled out, then uh, trying to manage stress and anxiety uh, would help. Uh, and uh, uh, when, uh, when you are planning uh, uh, daily activities, giving yourself enough time so that you are not rushed or not anxious to, uh, to complete things quickly, that may lead to anxiety and may, uh, may create a feeling of panic. And uh, uh, probably some of the strategies such as uh, taking a short nap in the afternoon or uh, um, maybe having some rest periods during the day might help. Uh, and if this happens in the off periods, uh, sometimes you may not be able to address it even by adjusting dopaminergic medications. Uh, but I think an attempt should be made uh, to see uh, and uh, relate this, uh, if this is related to the off periods when levodopa bears off and then if you can address uh, that uh, problem uh, the, and the internal tremor goes away, that would be helpful. Okay, uh, very good. Um, anything more to add with internal tremor and Parkins Parkinsonism? I, I think two things that are uh, very important, uh, educating the patients and then ruling out serious causes and reassuring. So if you educate patients about this, they will understand this and they will not get more anxious or at least panicky and then if you rule out serious causes and reassure them I think that could address this problem. Very good so that wraps it up for internal tremors and Parkinson's. Thank you Dr. Rana. Thank you Dr. Bennett. Okay, we'll see you the next one.